Hi, I'm Olivia Casayas, and I'm going to teach you about performance rights organizations today. What is a performance rights organization? Performance rights organizations, also known as PROs, collect and distribute money between copyright holders and groups who wish to use copyrighted works publicly, such as performing a song publicly or a stream or a broadcast. These PROs distribute 50% of the royalties to writers and 50% to the publishers. However, if you never assigned your copyright to a publisher, you'll receive 100% of the royalties. Writers can only affiliate with one performance rights organization at a time, but after a year or two, depending on which organization you choose, you can drop the PRO you're working with and move to another one. ASCAP is a one year at a time term and BMI is a two years at a time term. Publishers must affiliate with all performance rights organizations. This is because writers can be affiliated with any PRO. However, internationally, there is one PRO for each territory. Nonprofit Performance Rights Organizations In the United States, the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, also known as ASCAP, has the board of directors consist of equal number of writers and publishers, whereas the Broadcast Music Incorporated, also known as BMI, is owned by broadcasters. Together, these nonprofit performance rights organizations control 95% of the United States market. Due to this huge control of the market, these organizations are forced to be nonprofits because they are so popular they would become a monopoly. For profit performance rights organizations, CSAC, originally known as the Society of European Stage Authors and Composers, an invitation only performance rights organization, controls 4% of U.S. songs today. In the 1930s, this PRO was for mainly classical music. In the 1970s, CSAC moved into pop music for more profits. Global Music Rights, also known as GMR, a new performance rights organization, forces higher pay rates and controls only 1% of U.S. songs. However, they own extremely important and valuable songs. In 2013, GMR was founded by Irving Azoff, who is a man involved in many areas of the music industry. Where does the money for performance rights organizations come from? As of early 2010, 35% of the total performance rights organization's income came from television. 20% came from AF and FM radio. Songs that play a lot get a big PRO bonus. 10% came from all venues and festivals. These include live and pre-recorded performances. If a song is played on site at a venue, it qualifies as a performance. 15% came from all of the internet and 20% came from foreign income. This includes all of these different performance platforms that are profitable in the United States. However, this counts for money earned from the territories outside of the United States. Performance rights organizations income total up to 2.2 billion received in the United States annually and 7 billion received worldwide. How do performance rights organizations collect money? They collect money through two main type of licenses, per program licenses and blanket licenses. Per program licenses are the lesser used method for PROs getting money. However, the license for each song individually, this is the opposite of a blanket license. It mainly works for broadcasters such as non-music TV shows and movies, but it rarely is used for live venues. The fees are small percents of shows advertising revenue. Blanket licenses are the most common method of PROs getting paid, and it's over 70% of licenses. They're used for venues and broadcasters, and they cover all songs that a PRO controls. It's on an annual basis most commonly, and it, it is except for radio, which is a few years at a time. Fees are negotiable and based on the potential audience reach and the manner in which music is performed. The 1998 Fairness in Music Licensing Act. Due to lobbying by National Restaurants Association, the Fairness in Music Licensing Act made some business ex businesses exempt from paying for performances. Stores and shops were exempt if below 2,000 square feet. Bars and restaurants were exempt if below 3,700 square feet, if the source of the music is only radio and TV. However, if the music is live, and or in a business that exceeded the size limit and or the venue uses six or more speakers, the business must still pay. Often it will cost around $500 annually for all PROs in a small venue. This is the case unless the business is considered a music venue. Where does the money received by performance rights organizations go? Performance rights organizations take a percent off the total receipts annually to cover operating costs. This is because nonprofits only pay actual costs, but PROs and separate, send separate checks to publishers and writers, which is unique. Blanket licenses determine sample surveys, which is a polling statistic that randomly tracks a venue for a few hours 
hours to see their catalog songs played. Larger venues are surveyed far more often than small bars and clubs. They also ask the top 200 touring bands that are playing in arenas and other music venues for their playlists. For broadcasting, they take radio station logs, which they su get supplied by the radio and webcaster companies. The ASCAP and BMI randomly listens to verify accuracy of the report. They use broadcast data systems such as BDS, which picks up digital fingerprints of songs. Also for broadcasts, they use cue sheets. A cue sheet is a TV and film company document for every episode, show, movie, etc. It reports song cue title, timing and show, duration, writer, publisher, PRO, and how the music is incorporated into the show. Cue sheets are super important to performing rights organizations' money. It's what PROs use to determine the money owed worldwide. Performance rights organizations versus sync rights. Sync rights have separate licenses, rights, and incomes to PROs. Sync licenses are needed by TV and film studios when an audiovisual image is used in any type of film or video, while performance rights are needed when a song is performed or played publicly in a setting. Government Consent Decree, a 1941 court case where broadcasters sued ASCAP for allegedly acting like a monopoly and charging unfair rates. Now, ASCAP and BMI are subject to a government consent decree to keep their monopoly power against broadcasters in check. Rate Court takes any disputes of performing rights organizations overcharging broadcasters through their blanket license fee and hears it in front of one or two judges to decide fair performing rights organization rates. However, this does not apply to CSAC and global music rights. Because of their smaller market shares of song co songs co copyrights, their smaller market share makes them less of a threat of becoming a monopoly. Although it is important to note that some publishers want out of BMI and ASCAP to receive better rates and are not subject to rate court. Performance rights in movie theaters. In the United States, no performance licenses are required for movie theaters. This is due to a 1940s court case which concluded that movie theaters are exempt from paying for performance rights because they are technically just projecting a film and not performing at movie theaters. Broadcasters still pay once movie broadcasts on TV or cable. However, physical disc of movies are not performances. They still have a home video fee that gets factored into the sync license deal. Thank you for listening.